Now, one thing that I want to talk about is proprioception. And this is probably not the best pen. Proprioception and exercise. So what I've actually described so far is when, when you're actually exercise when you're um, feeling what you're doing in terms of a particular movement, what you actually get from your proprioceptors. But obviously, as we exercise, we fatigue, we get tired. Now, the, the, the single most uh, important exercise for reducing the proprioceptive response is eccentric exercise. Okay, so eccentric exercise is when the muscle lengthens whilst under tension. So we do it with weight training. When you do weight training, if I do a bicep curl, this is the concentric part of the movement. The eccentric part is as I lower that weight down. The muscle is still under tension, but it's lengthening. And other examples include downhill running, okay, of eccentric exercise. Eccentric exercise exerts the most amount of damage to our muscle fibers. Uh, it's a good type of damage because the muscle fiber will adapt and come, the myofibrils will come back uh, stronger with, with greater sarcomeres uh, and they'll be generally stronger. So eccentric exercise will cause damage to the muscle fibers and it will also cause damage to the muscle spindles. Okay, because remember, they are still muscle fibers that are embedded within the skeletal muscle. So eccentric exercise will damage muscle spindles. Okay, and as that happens, we will obviously have decreased proprioceptive abilities. So, for example, when we're, when we're doing a particular movement when we're tired, it's often clumsy. It's not as sharp as when you're, when you're not tired, when, you, when you're at the beginning of the, the movement or the beginning of the exercise, towards the end, you're clumsy, you don't quite get the right technique, and there's, there's um, the likelihood that the muscle spindles are, are, are damaged, uh, there's fatigue within the muscle as well. Uh, and obviously, this can actually last for up to 72 hours. Okay, so we know that, for example, when you have, when you do eccentric exercise, you get delayed onset muscle soreness or DOMS, and that can, uh, uh, the onset of that is usually 24 hours, uh, with peak symptoms occurring around about uh, 72 hours. Um, so you, you, it's likely that your proprioceptive sense is reduced for, for that amount of time, and, and then as the muscle uh, regenerates and, and becomes stronger, uh, your proprioceptive uh, response returns back to where it was before the damage occurred. So eccentric exercise is the, the key kind of uh, propagator of damage to the proprioceptive sense. So it's obviously very important that we're aware of that. Um, of course, when we're exercising as well, you do have other uh, perceptions. So, you know, activation of the pain receptors may also uh, influence uh, or may also cloud the proprioceptive sense that we're getting back to the brain and our understanding of that particular movement. It, so it may be clouded by, um, by pain and, and other factors as well. And just briefly, I wanted to talk about proprioception and um, elderly populations as well. Okay, so this gives a little bit of clinical perspective um, with proprioception, okay? Now, in elderly people, uh, we have what's known as sarcopenia, okay? So I'm gonna put that down here. Sarco, I hope, hopefully I've spelt that right. Um, it's actually the other way around. Sarcopenia, which is a loss of muscle fibers, okay, with age. So as we, as we get older, we start to lose muscle. So this is the loss of skeletal muscle fibers. And we're probably also then going to lose or have a reduction in the muscle spindles as well. So we're gonna have decreased uh, sense of where our joint is in space. And we're going to have an increased risk of um, having falls, okay, which is very common in elderly. So, for example, if an elderly person is walking down the stairs, 
relative to a young person, because their muscle spindles have, have lost fibres because of the sarcopenia, which has occurred with ageing, they're, they're not going to be able to perceive exactly where their limb is, and they may either overextend their, uh, their knee or underextend under their knee, and of course then slip, fall, then they have an increased risk of fracture when they fall because their bone mineral density is so low. Uh, and obviously if they're then immobilized, they then have an increased risk of other comorbidities uh, like heart disease, uh, high blood pressure, etc. So you can see the consequences of this can be quite dire if it's left to, to progress. So in terms of the, uh, the, the research, there's not very much research looking at uh, proprioceptive responses in elderly populations, so it is definitely an area which needs uh, further research in terms of characterising what happens, what contributes to the decrease in proprioceptive response, which might contribute to the falls. Um, but essentially, it's important to consider the fact that uh, proprioception is important for every single movement that we do, um, even while I'm writing on this board, I'm consciously aware of what my hand is doing and, and the feedback from the muscles in my hand are going to the brain and I know for example when I'm writing uh, clumsily and I know when I'm doing very neat handwriting. Again this is all information uh, stored in the brain and the sensors are being sent back from the proprioceptors, the sensory information uh, is being sent back. So there you have it. We've got muscle spindles, which are involved in detecting stretch of the muscle uh, because they have special intrafusal fibres, um, and they are able to also give us an idea of our uh, joint position, joint angle, the limb position. Uh, and then we also have the Golgi tendon organ as well, which has a protective function to ensure that we do not have unnecessary uh, or extreme forces going through the muscle tendon uh, to bone complex um, so they cause an inhibitory signal to the alpha motor neurons and the muscle will cease to contract or will reduce uh, its strength of contraction uh, and you'll have reduced tension going through the Golgi tendon organ. Um, we've also talked about how the muscle spindle and the Golgi tendon organ contribute to proprioception which is knowledge of our body in a given space, it's knowledge of the movements that we perform, it's linked to kinesthesia, so this ability to perform or execute movements which are uh, spot on in terms of the feedback that you get. So those movements that you know you're going to score a penalty kick or you're going to uh, shoot the ball through the hoop or you're going to shoot a, uh, a rifle and hit the target. So it's, it's that kind of uh, feeling that you get. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, this kind of introduction to uh, some of the sensory uh, uh, sensors that we have in the muscle and how they're related to proprioception. Uh, please feel free to leave comments uh, if you have any questions and I'll look forward to seeing you on another video soon. Thank you very much.